Here are five signs it is time for you to leave the narcissistically abusive relationship. Number one, it's not really a sign. If you know that this is a narcissistically abusive relationship, if you've looked at the nine traits of narcissistic personality disorder and you think your partner qualifies for six of those nine and you think they have MPD or anything close to MPD, it's time to leave. By the way, you don't need to be in a relationship with a narcissist in order to leave a relationship. If you're with somebody who consistently is not listening to your demands, who you're saying to, look, um, when you do this, this, and this, it's extremely painful and I'm making the demand that you stop hurting me and they just keep on doing it because it's convenient for them to do so, you can start looking for the exit. You have that right. Number two, when you start moving into a phase of open abuse, it's no longer covert, you're no longer just dealing with passive aggression, you're dealing now with consistent and regular, even daily forms of abuse, that could be overt, it could be shouting, it could be threatening, it could be humiliation, it could be covert, it could be stonewalling, it could be passive aggression, it could be silent treatment, it could be uh, making the ambience that you're in very, very uncomfortable, then I think it's time to accept that you are in a relationship that is at least emotionally abusive, if not narcissistically abusive, and it's right and good for you to start looking to exit that relationship. The third thing you wanna look out for is when you've found yourself in the relationship in a downward spiral of narcissistic injury and narcissistic rage. Sometimes at certain phases of the narcissistically abusive relationship, especially if you've gone to therapy or for whatever other reason you've become defiant, you're not acceding to all of the demands. You're not just surrendering your critical thinking skills, your sovereignty. You're actually pushing back and saying, hang on a minute, this isn't very fair. What that does is it creates something called narcissistic injury. You're no longer in alignment with their fantasy-based, grandiose, delusional version of themselves that they need to impose upon you and impose upon themselves in order to survive daily life. When you negate their delusional, grandiose fantasy, you injure them. You injure the narcissistic shell, this fantasy space that they're living inside of, they're hiding from reality inside of it. Remember, the key, the root element of narcissistic personality disorder is a denial. It is a child's, it's an infant's, no, I can't deal with it, keep reality at bay. So they're very stubborn, they're very uh, potentially confrontational when you push up against that fantasy, when you push up against that shell, it's a defense from reality. You keep imposing reality, you keep on saying these are the facts, this is what you said, I uh, recorded you saying this. I have the screenshots of the text conversation. They hate that. It creates an awful lot of narcissistic injury. And that narcissistic injury, when it threatens the Moloch that they've created inside of themselves, this false god that they believe they are, that they're trying to be in their delusional, psychotic, dissociated state, when you threaten that relationship that they have with their own false self, and you're ceasing to make due sacrifice, which is your job, by the way, is to sacrifice yourself. It is a sacrificial relationship dynamic. And if you start refuting that, you will be in a lot of trouble. You've created narcissistic injury, and they will explode into narcissistic rage. They will become vengeful in ways that you will struggle to imagine. You'll be thinking, my God, I thought I knew this person. I thought they loved me. They told me they loved me. They told me that I was special. They told me they cared about me. And now it seems like they really want to destroy me. They're cycling through different parts of themselves daily. They're in a constant battle, trying to make themselves feel grandiose and superior and above mere mortals like you. But sometimes, even when they're not receiving narcissistic injury from the outside world, there's another superego injunction that steps in that says to them, you're not that great. And then they start to slide into a more fragile, vulnerable state of narcissism. They become very needy, they can become irritable, they can become very clingy and insecure and even depressed. And that doesn't prove that they're not experiencing narcissistic personality disorder. It's a, it's a trait. It's actually part of the system for them to slide back into these two states. So previously, we would think of them as being stable, 
they could be grandiose, they were stable, and they always felt good. Nowadays, it's generally more accepted. It's not complete psychological orthodoxy, but it's generally more accepted that when we're talking about narcissistic personality disorder, it slides, it goes into different states. So it'll be up and then it'll be down. It'll be up and it'll be down. And it's fighting between two pillars, between two poles of superego injunctions. There's two different voices inside of their heads with two different messages. Roughly speaking, the messages are something like, you are wonderful, you are amazing, you are this God that you've created of yourself, this image of yourself as, I don't know what their thing is, to be very sexy or to be very smart or to be very powerful or very successful or very frightening, whatever the story, the fantasy, the fiction they've created, that's one message that they're getting inside of themselves. But there's another message that's running that they're desperately trying to run away from that's saying you're useless and you're worthless. They recruit you, they recruit me, they recruit other human beings, quickly throw them into the fire of the Moloch's belly, hoping to keep a hold of the good voice and to run away from the bad voice. When things get rocky, it's because you're saying no, and then the bad voice starts playing up. The fourth sign that it could be time for you to leave your narcissistically abusive relationship is if things start getting strange. It's not often talked about this, but I believe it's a personality disorder, uh, as much of psychopathy, um, as much of just raw narcissism, as it is of psychosis, as it is of dissociation. They're not really in a relationship with you. They're not really in a relationship with anybody. They're not even in a relationship with reality. Everything comes to them, you, data, daily life, facts about reality, comes through this thick veil, this shield wall that's there to defend them from reality, that's there to defend them from the truth. They're constantly distorting, deleting, and generalizing data in order to live. And because it's dissociative and because it's fantasy-based, they're imposing their own matrix blue pill simulated reality on themselves. They're like walking around with these new Google goggles that people have. So they don't have to see the real world. They can see the real world plus extra stuff that's fantasy-based. It's not real reality. They get confused. Because they're dissociative, they forget. They might start confusing you with their ex. They might, if it's a narcissistic parent, they might start confusing you with another sibling. So they'll accuse you of things that you didn't do. They'll tell stories about your history that are not your history, that are their history or another person's history. And they've just gotten confused between these different people because you, it's sad to say, and it's hurtful to say it, I'm sorry if it's the first time you're hearing it, you're not a person to them. In order for them to interact with you, they take you inside of the shield wall, they have an avatar, a fantasy-based avatar of you, it's very two-dimensional, it's very um, it's very shallow, it's very flat, it's not a real person, it's not the reality and the complexity and the nuance of you, because they're not interested in the nuance of you, they're interested in you as a character in their story, they're the director, they're the producer, they're the editor, you have a job to do and you better do it because if you don't, you're kicked off the set. So things can get weird. They'll accuse you of things you've never done, never said. They'll have these strange uh, lapses in memory and they'll confuse you with other people and things simply start to get a little bizarre. The fifth sign that it's time for you to really leave the narcissistically abusive relationship is when you can see that the narcissist has gone into the devaluation phase. The ultimate purpose, the ultimate end goal of the true narcissistic personality disordered attachment is to absorb you, to hyper over, uh, overvalue you, to idealize you, and then you at an unconscious level kind of covertly agree to idealize them. So you have two idealized, non-real, non-authentic selves interacting with each other to then be consumed to be sacrificed to the false self, the, the sacrificial Moloch icon that they have to sacrifice other people and other people's time and attention to in order for them to stay afloat. And what starts to happen after that is when you've done your job and you're kind of used up, um, they can move into this very nasty devaluation phase where they want to unattach from you and they want to have the experience of pushing you away. 
but not just pushing you away as a valuable human being, as someone who loved them as part of their story. They want to make you trash. They need for you to be trash because they live inside of this weird narcissistic split. That's how they were raised. They were very, very good and they were very, very bad. And then they had these conflicting messages running inside their head. And so they have to split you and they split reality. People are all together, wonderful. Oh, he's a wonderful chap. Or oh, he's the worst, he's deceptive, he's evil. There's, he's just, he, uh, or they, you know, they, they're deceptive. They're wonderful, they're evil. They are the best thing I've ever found. And I don't know, two months, two years later. Oh, they were jealous of me and they were stabbing me in the back and they were stealing my ideas. And you've heard it all before. This is not a bug, it's a feature. This is the way the, the broken, twisted architecture, the machine of the narcissist ultimately goes. They can't help it. They have to go in this direction. Idealize, absorb, co-idealize. So you're both idealizing each other inside of the fantasy matrix simulation space. And then they can't stand it any longer. They can't stand to think of you as a good person any longer after a period of time. Unless you are offering complete blind submission, all of your little indications, all those little narcissistic injuries you gave where you didn't agree to a nuance and to a nicety to everything they told you about themselves as being true, everything they told you about reality as being true, all of that was stored. And eventually uh, uh, there is a trip, there is a switch that's tripped and then it's punishment time. I am going to trash this person and I'm gonna leave them dead in the road behind me. It is not enough for them to break away from you and leave you and say, oh, well, you know, we just parted ways. No, they have to absolutely trash you in every way possible. And if they have the power, they will go so far as to uh, physically, literally remove you from the planet. If they have the power and the courage for that, and if they don't, they will leave you a broken wreck. That's why in the devaluation phase of the narcissistic relationship, they're so cruel, they're so vindictive, they appear to be extremely sadistic, and perhaps they are, but the point is to leave you broken in the dirt behind them. And that is part of what the Moloch, false god, grandiose self demands of them across a long enough timeline. It's very sad, very cruel, very nasty narcissistic personality disorder. And if you're trapped inside of a dyad with somebody like that, it has um, no good ending. The good that can come of it though, is that you can escape the relationship, you can learn to love again, you can learn to get on with your life again, and you will probably be a stronger human being than you were before the relationship began. If you want help with learning how to do that, you can head on over to richardgrannon.com. Uh, you can check out my courses there. You can join the newsletter. We have a membership site coming soon where I will explain all of the nuance of the uh, new model of narcissistic abuse that I've developed in the last six months. And you can also find my course with Mr. Mark Vicente where we describe narcissistic abuse from a cult psychology perspective, which is a very important perspective to have when you're looking at narcissistic abuse. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time and for your attention. And I look forward to speaking to you again very soon. Thank you.